Hello everyone, welcome to a new Lightroom tutorial. In this video, let me show you how you can get really intense color tones using Lightroom's split toning tool. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Here we have the raw file opened up in Lightroom Classic. Now, in order for this to work, we can't sadly just straight away jump into the split toning since this wouldn't have much of an effect on the image. We have to set up the base image first before we can apply this color effect. This means we want to head into the basic tab and work on the exposure, but also the white balance, which is really, really important. For this image, let's change the profile to Adobe Landscape to just bring up the base saturation a notch. Then I want to fix the exposure since right now we don't have much detail in the sky and the shadows are a little bit too dark, as you can also see looking at the histogram. So I'm bringing down the highlights first, getting back more details from the sky. And I'm also bringing up the shadows, just balancing the exposure a little more. And then let's bring up the whites. And while we're at it, I'm going to add some texture and I'm dropping the clarity just to get some kind of glowing look over this image. Now the exposure looks much better. You can also see that looking at the histogram. At this point, we can start working on the white balance. And that's highly dependent on your image. Since we're working with the sunset shot right here, we want the whole shot to be a lot warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature quite a bit, introducing a lot more of those warmer yellow tones. And I'm also going to introduce some more tint, just a little bit like this. So this is our base setup for the future color grading. Of course, if you're working with something else, for example, like a dark forest scene, it wouldn't make much sense to bring up the temperature since you don't want to have those warmer color tones. Instead, you might want to turn down the temperature, introducing some colder tones, just better fitting the scene. So that's really, really important to keep in mind. Then at this point, we also need to do some masking before we can get to the good stuff with the split toning. So let's go through that real quick. The end goal for this image for me is to have a very, very warm look in the center while the top part of the sky is dark and cold. So I want to start working on that using a linear gradient, just covering most of the top but I don't want to affect the tree, so I'm going to click on the mask, say subtract, choose color range mask, and just click on that tree. This is looking pretty good. We could raise up the refine amount to get a more precise mask like this, but this should be fine. And what I want to do here is to just bring down the exposure. And at the same time, as I said, I want the top part of the sky to have some kind of blue color tone in here which is not the case at the moment. So what we want to do now is to bring down the temperature, reintroducing those cold color tones. Now let me create another linear gradient on top of that right away. And again, I just want to bring down the exposure and this will also make the blue tones just a bit more intense. Then let's also work on the foreground real quick. Again, I'm using a simple linear gradient. I try to cover the field in the foreground. What I don't want to have targeted is the very near foreground. So I'm again making use of that subtract button, choose a linear gradient and drag one up like this. And the reason here is I wanted part further away to be brighter than the part in the foreground. So what I'm doing here is to bring up the exposure just a notch. Perfect. Then I can make this effect stronger using another linear gradient just like that and bringing down the exposure. I could also drop the shadows for the same effect. And to prevent too much underexposure, I'm slightly raising the blacks. All right. So at this point, we are done with the masking and the basic adjustments. This means we now have set up the image for the split toning. So let's collapse the basic panel and let's head into the color grading panel which is where all the split toning is happening. So very important up here, you have a point for the highlights, the midtones, the shadows, and a point for the global settings. Depending on the scene, you want to give those points different color tones. We are working with the sunset scene. This means we want to improve the warmer color tones, making them more intense. So let's start with the highlights. 
down here you have hue, saturation and luminance. For this image the luminance slider isn't that important. We just want to focus on hue and saturation. So let's try making the sunset colors more intense. We first need to set up the hue. You can see the color range right here or you could use the color wheel. I personally prefer to use the hue slider and just go right there somewhere in the warm yellow to orange range. As of now nothing has changed but once we set up the hue we can now push the saturation and this is where the magic happens. So let me bring up the saturation all the way. And you can see especially in the sky since we have a lot of highlights in here how everything is changing and is getting this very intense warm color tone. I can toggle it before and after view so we went from this to this with just the use of two sliders. Now let's continue with the midtones. Here we could go two ways. We could play around with the colder color tone to keep the balance between the colder and warmer tones. However, I think for this shot a very warm look looks very very good. So I want to go with the warm color tone again. So let's do the same procedure. Set up the hue. I think I want to go try something in the orange range just about here. And then I'm bringing up the saturation. However, I'm not raising it as much as for the highlights. Just to a point somewhere around here. Of course this is very very heavy but that just comes down to personal preferences. I quite like it desaturated. And finally the shadows. Here it doesn't really make sense to add another warm color tone. Instead we kind of want to make use of the color balance and just add color on the opposite side of the color wheel. So instead of going with the warm range we want to apply something in the cold color range. So let's bring up the hue to that point. Maybe around here and then bring up the saturation. However keep it very very subtle. If you're going too high this looks kind of weird. It does have a specific style to it but I'm not a big fan of that. So I want to keep it rather low like maybe around 4. All right and that is it for the split toning. You can see it's a huge transformation going from this image to this intense golden hour shot. Now while we're at it let me go through the different settings as well. As I said the luminance slider isn't that helpful for this image. What this does is it controls the brightness of the area we are in. So right now we're in the shadows. If you're going to bring down the luminance the shadows will get darker. You could use that to make them brighter and fix some underexposed parts and give this image a soft look. It is a possibility but I don't really like that style so I'm going to reset it by double clicking on that. Below that we have blending and balance which is globally affecting the split toning. Blending is just how much of the split toning is kind of layered over the image. If I turn it up you can see it gets more intense and if I turn it down it gets less intense. And the balance basically bringing the balance up adjusts the image in favor of the highlights so the highlights will get more intense. If I bring it down you can see we get a colder image and this just means the shadows will be in favor of the split toning. Finally we also have a global color wheel. Personally I'm not using it that often but if you want you could enchant the warm look some more giving it a warm hue and bringing up the saturation. However this is way too much for my taste so let's not use this. All right now that's it for the split toning. However you might have already noticed the top part of the image doesn't have the blue sky anymore. At this point we want to head back into the masking menu and bring it back to a better place. So let me create a new linear gradient again covering most of the sky like this and again I'm going to say subtract color range and click in the tree since I don't want to affect that. Play around with the refine slider and what I want to do with this part of the sky is to just dramatically drop the temperature. Just like that to reintroduce that blue color cast. Now you can already see some kind of purple going on in there as well. So to fix that we need to bring down the tint getting rid of that color cast like this. It is still not as intense as I wanted so I'm going to create another linear gradient covering the top of the sky and just bring down the exposure some more. Perfect. Now that's looking great. 
Finally, we could head down into the calibration tab, adjusting the colors a little more by bringing down the blue primary hue, which just helps making the warmer tones a little more intense with the red color cast. And then I'm bringing up the saturation a lot, since I just like how this image looks with those strong intense colors. All right, and that is the image after the Lightroom adjustments. So you can see we went from the image on the left side to this edited version. And just let me point out once more, you can just take a raw image and slap on some split toning. This doesn't work. You need to first set up the raw file. You need to set up the exposure. You need to set up the white balance in order for everything to work together nicely. Okay. And that's it for this split toning tutorial. I hope this was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left about this editing method, please let me know in the comments. I will gladly answer them. And thank you so much for watching this video.